Welcome, fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745, and we're going to have a look at, and I didn't name it this, Evil Democracy 1932. But before we do that, if there's anybody new here, please smash that like button um, and subscribe to the channel for many more great historical gaming videos. Okay, and I really do appreciate that, uh, those who do um, both like and subscribe okay evil democracy we're gonna new game here now this game i've only really sort of looked at the germany 1932 scenario there's also britain 1935 and france in 1936 okay i could spend the entire episode just sort of talking about the setting particularly of the the german um political crisis in, in and around 1932. we could try to do some of that while looking at this game but that's of course what we're going to choose now okay political parties you get to choose any of these parties to play from now the national socialist german workers party the national socialistische deutsche arbeiters partei I'm sure i'm butchering that germans but um just pretend it's from before unification of the german language and everyone spoke with a different accent okay um so is in the game but you are in essence trying to oppose them trying to keep them from coming through power so they are in the game but you don't get to play in that I have a little bit of mixed um feelings on that but i get it from a gameplay standpoint and just sort of from the um you know, uh, political um, realities then and now. Okay, so um, we have the SDP, the Social um, what, Socialist Party, Demo S whatever, Social Democratic Party. We could go into a whole long dialogue difference between this uh, um, and even the Social Democratic Party but this is really a um, a democratic socialist party. Okay, sometimes the names can be confusing because social democrats are different than democratic socialists. The communist party, the KDP, or the uh, in the uh, because they do a different the DKP. Sorry. So yeah, they're not the center left. Yeah. Then we have the Zentrum, the Centrum, the, the Deutsches Zentrum Partei. They are a Catholic party that um, predates or goes back to before World War I, um, sort of a Catholic resistance party to um, what is, I guess, majority um, Protestant Germany and um various pushing on that kind of thing that's where that is um and they're calling it center right and yeah by this time they sort of are center right as opposed to a true center party but um you have them the stahlhelm steelhelm at league of german french soldiers now this was a political party at the time it did have seats in the party but it is, uh, um, the, oh boy, the, the uh, Deutsches Volks Party, I believe is what, the German People's Party, um, which I really was thinking the next, um, the DNVP. The Stahlhelms are working in league, even though they're a different party, as sort of the, um, and I'm forgetting what the communists um, called there, and and even social, um, the social. Oh boy, huh? I should 
study up on these things better before starting this stuff. Uh, the socialists do have a um, a sort of street fighter element to them. There is the communist. The Stahlhelm is essence is sort of the equivalent of the brown shirts for the um, Stahl, for the German National People's Party, but they're also running their own parties in conflict with the um, uh, the, the Nationalist Party. You also have the Ver Bavarian People's Party. They're sort of kind of like these guys or these guys, but I'm not really sure exactly where, but for Bavaria. So they're a sort of a localized party. The German Radical Democrat Party, center left. I really don't know much about them. Can't really comment on them. Um, another sort of center right party. I think it's briefly around at this point. And the German Peasants Party um, is around. I don't know all these parties. And some of these are really minor parties um, here. Um, really minor. I've looked at most of this stuff in general overall view and from the National Socialist perspective. Now we're going to play as um, the DNVP, the Deutsches Nationalist Volkspartei. Um, when they're calling this the People's Party, um, In English, I think it is a mistranslation, in at least some of these cases here. Um, the Deutsches Communist Party. Um, yeah, I think the, the translation would be the German Folk Party, as opposed to People's Party. Um, the, oh boy. Um, the DDR, the Deutsches, um, oh, Deutsches Demokratisch Republic, you know, is East German, that's more of, we, we see a lot of people, I, I don't think they, they don't mean it like you see with a lot of, you know, the um, people's parties in other countries, they, they mean it more as a folk party, um, at least in my understanding, which has a different meaning and connotation. So, and we're going to go here, which is, this is just too big of a challenge for me right now. We're going to go with 2.5 million marks. Some 1930s. And I both really wanted to play this and really sort of scared to be what this, what this game was going to be. Okay. Oh, this is also still in um, pre-release version. They were nice enough to give me a copy after I asked them for it because like once I saw this out um, that it existed, I just had to take a look at it and wanted to present it. I didn't know if I was going to take a look at it and say it's complete and total trash or go, hey, this is a great game. I can't at this point say it. Well, it's not like some, and I was worried it was going to be some sort of National Socialist Apologist game or something. No, it's definitely not that as far as I can tell. Okay. I don't know how much this is going to change when full released, but um, the UI here is a bit rough. I'm trying to figure this out, and I've sort of played this a bit trying to figure the UI out, but I'm not in any way really a... Um, an expert at this. Okay. Alfred um, Hogenberg. I often read these names and don't necessarily pronounce them. He is our main party leader. Um, boy, I hope they do better once they get ready for the real release and like actually use a picture of him. He had this sort of brilliant white mustache. That's, I think, white, um, you know, with the um, curled up at the ends and whatnot. Um, it's not the, you know, the worst, maybe, random picture used for him, but it's, that's not him. And so we, you start out with this. You need to, well, don't need to. It would benefit you to fill all of these slots with leaders. So, um, but you really want to appoint leader as a newspaper editor, which is a 
pretty big one. Strikes, and if you're ready to do some strikes, I'll put somebody here. Sponsors. Select a meeting with sponsors. These are people who basically get you money. Select a leader to manage donations to the party. And elections, select a leader to falsify. Uh, notice how they say this, falsify the results of the elections. We're going to um, put him in charge of the newspaper. Okay, we're going to see about hiring. Okay, um, remember we have two and a half million um, uh, marks. And this is these are somewhat random. Um, one of the times when I started this, um, Orbeck was one of the people that are possible. So, and I don't know if their stats are random or somehow. Um, they're all going to be the same price. So let's look for somebody with good stats. We already have him taking care of the newspaper. So newspaper stats are our least important. So 74. 460. 26 is loyalty to the party. That can grow over. Damn, though. Having charisma in front of a crowd. Nomination and activist action. Let's go with him. We're going to hire him and we're going to put him there. And so, hopefully, helps with the sponsors. That's a major hit to our budget. Okay, that was just a crazy person walking by. Oh, we live in interesting times. Hire three journalists to work in the editorial department. Okay, so journalists, we need to come over here. Um, let's go with, let's just uh, spend 2500 to get possible selections, and this is their individual salaries. Okay, newspaper, that's running the newspaper. Um, or you have you can have multiple newspapers running leaflets. Those are writing leaflets, investigation, and interviewing people to hire. But you're going to have them do that. Okay, so we have that now. Uh, hired. Yeah. Um. Um. Again. The stat. No, nope, that's coming up here. Guess we just have to hire. So we want someone. Here, um, obviously, um, salary, initial hiring price. Um, I guess we're going to hire him to run our primary newspaper. No, I know I clicked there, print. Okay, no, we're not ready to print this yet. Um, report. This is overall reports. Nothing really yet at this. Okay, here we go. This is what I was looking for. So you can have a guy running leaflets, a guy running two different newspapers, and then you can spend money to open up more slots. He is um, good at investigation, good at newspapers, so, and terrible at um, interviewing and okay at doing leaflets. So we're going to have him run the newspaper newspaper number one i guess i right. no. back oh no um journalist okay now we can get somebody to do leaflets we have two guys here he is um a fair amount cheaper and if we're just looking to do leaflets with him let's hire him and so he's going to come here we want to do that now we can also from here hire more we want someone to do some investigation work so we're going to hire this guy and see i you can see these are somewhat um, random carl brun um i guess you can't have two guys named carl brun but probably not coming for the same job More likely at the, this sort of level. Um, let's get this guy here. Now, what we're going to do is give these guys 
currently here a task. Okay, he is going to interview our leader. So that's what he's going to do for work. You can add ah, some of the language on this is a little awkward. You can also uh, do um, compromising material for against an opponent or slander an opponent. Um, and you can see here how this highlight bar changes. So investigating work. You can see here the NSDAP. They leave out the primary symbol of it. Um, okay, we'll get into some more of the politics of what's going on. These top three parties are, are worthless to try to do. Oppose. Let's oppose. Let's try to dig up some secrets on them. Okay, now we can come over here to the staff. I'm not exactly sure how all this works. Um, obviously, we can go from some of the sort of basis kind of thing, campaigning promoters, people either handing out leaflets or newspapers, and activists and activists in this period come with um, people with clubs. So we're going to hire some of these guys here. Um, Hiring cost is considerably more than their salary, so we're going to hire. Mm, I don't know how much activists will help. Now we can click here. Okay, activists, agitators. Um, Agitation, activists, sponsors, different voters, headquarters is back to here. Um, protests, we can do demonstration strikes. They're going to cost a lot of money. You can see here we don't have enough to do any of these yet. That's sort of why left now we can come up here we do have east prussia now this is sort of regional um the biggest state is prussia not east prussia but prussia and prussia is about the size of all the other states put together so it is and the next biggest one is bavaria which is these three put together upper lower bavaria and franconia is basically bavaria um Rittenberg. Um, I think that's mostly outside of Bavaria. Is uh, we can as we hover over, we can see who's popular in what areas. Now I don't know if there's a way to directly yet, or if there is generally a way to directly send people to individual states. We click there now. Okay now but we can come over to um total number of activists we have zero activists so we do need to also um get some activists as well no we don't want to go too big um we've got to build up so we oh and we have we're at turn one we have 150 turns approximately until the election. Um, okay, so uh, back to the map here. So we can do it equally to all regions, proportionally to the voters. Um, 25% 20, uh, of the regions that have the lowest percentage, 25% of the regions that have the highest percentage. I think, yeah, yeah. Um, um, okay. Um, 
Fusion the electorate. Okay. Agitation. I'm not really sure if we want to agitate where we are popular or agitate where we're not. I think we're going to agitate where we're not. Again, if this is, if you're thinking you're getting a good, well presented how to play this game, this is not it, unfortunately. I wish I could understand it better. And below us. Okay, so we're going to do that. And we're going to, um, and we, oh, you could do, you know, higher, but we're going to do that. But it is. Okay, so we see where we have the lowest. We sent out some agitators um, out there. Now we're going to come over to activists. And we're going to go to send them out to our um, where we have the most support to try to hopefully get more support. Okay, so that's sending them out. No, no. Come back here. We're going to eventually print some newspapers, but we got to get some articles written first for it. And mentioning that, let's come back to here and let's see if we can hire another journalist. Um, let's grab this Carl Brun. I think we already have another one. Oh, no. Well, yeah. Um, this other guy was decent. We're going to. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. Um. We already have an interview. Okay, so we don't, we're not, we're going to look for another investigation guy. We're going to hire him. And we're going to put his task. Um, we're going to go to slander. And let's slander the um, STP. Okay, so they're going to, he's going to get compromising material to Nazi. He's going to slander the SDP. They really are sort of evil democracy in this as we're looking at this. And he's going to interview our leader to make him look good. Okay. So let's, let's put, let's do this next turn. Oh, we need to come up with, um, Dogmas, accept the dogma. And these are somewhat random as what we can do. Okay, restrict the government from engaging in different sectors, center right. And that's this one. The the gray ones are the only ones we can do. Um, person's life is paramount, raises the status of the party leader, cost organizing prize, protests to cost of organizing protests increase. Um, rise the status of the party leaders, freedom of expression, center left. Uh, freedom to have private property, center right. Losing support from our regular voters, attract sponsors. Raises the status of the party leaders. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to go with that. And we're not going to print any newspaper yet because we don't yet have any articles. This is, we're in turn two already here. So we can come back to the map and see for agitation. We, we have a bunch that are not occupied. Um, busy agitators, they've got a lot more than we do, but I think they have a lot more money than we do. Um, And for activist, okay, it looks like we're having them the best, so I don't know if we're doing well here. Um, we'll send out um, maybe some proportionally to all. We'll send out half of our proportionally to the voters. 
out there. Well, I guess just click here for the headquarters. Oh, um, reports. So from just the last turn, income, you have monthly income budgets, expenses, total. And we haven't produced printed any newspapers, sponsors, demonstrations, leader, um, total um, voters. We can see here. Um, we can see where we have voters, agitators out. So again, I am, um, or give a reporting assignment to a journalist is what they want us to do. Well, we already sort of have some. Um, well, let's spend a bit and grab a few more. You can get up to 20 at, at a time. Okay, for interviewing and investigation, Peter Fertig looks to be a good hire. And Johan Count can run our other newspaper, so we're going to do that. Okay. There we go. We got, now he's even better than this guy running a paper. We're going to give him a task of um, mm, let's get him to slander the NSDAP. Now, my understanding, the basic goal is to win World War II before it starts, if you will. By not having World War II, yay, we win by not having World War II. Um, and that would be the best winning outcome for Europe. Now, um, there's so much I could say how we could go on for long lectures about all of this, but we're seeing a bit of a um, revolution in the streets as I'm making this. I don't know when you'll be watching this, but um, it's still going on. They're pulling down statues. The latest two statues here in the U.S. is Christopher Columbus. I'm not saying he was some sort of saint or anything, but... Yeah, really. I don't know, Christopher Columbus. Really, you're going after him. Uh, it just, it just, you know, I get why some people are, you know, Confederate, particularly politicians, but also Confederate generals. Okay, yeah, Civil War, slavery. I get that. Christopher Columbus, one of them, was pulled down by Native Americans. I get why they don't like him. But trust me, the world's much better that Christopher Columbus came here than if they were just left alone. But that's another whole issue. Um, so we're seeing this kind of chaos going on. And that's... Uh, and especially if you look at it over the you know preceding 12 to 14 years, however you want to look at it, um, in Germany is sort of what's going on now but in steroids people like security from the left and the right they like security often on the left they're looking for economic security place to live food that kind of thing especially in some of these earlier troubled times on the right generally law and order is what they're looking for security meaning most of them aren't worried about a place to live or a um, something to eat. And those can be real issues. Um, place to live in the, and a um, something to eat is a bit of an issue in America, but really it's currently an issue mostly for those that are drug addicted or mentally ill. 
Um, we've failed at dealing with that because of things. And that's a long discussion. Um, so, yeah, but really for most of the people that are in the streets complaining about things, that's not a real issue for them. So, yeah. This is also a time of the perfect is the enemy of the good. Uh, it's, um, reports, reports. Uh, oh, here, percent. Okay, um, maybe not what I was looking for. Um, Activist, journalist. Mm, let's come up to the map, maybe. Okay, um, agitation. Oh, well, it may be best to, uh, sorry, I try to show, um, Oh, boy. Editorial team here. Um, okay, well, they're already... Oh, um, but you can see all the different parties. Oh, and which... Um, the leader. Um, Hugenberg. I, like I say, used to reading these names, not used to saying them. Hugenberg really used, he was a propagandist. I forget exactly what his connection was to Krupp AG, but it goes back, um, I think, to the time that, um, yeah, before World War I starts, I believe. Um, and he's very much of a sort of propagandist, an industrial propagandist. Propagandist. He is busy attacking the socialists and the Democrats and claiming they're working together. Well, in a way they are, in a way they're not. Um, trying to overthrow um, What do I want? How do I want? Uh, uh, overthrow society would be a good term. Not just Weimar, but, but overthrow society. And I would say, generally speaking, he's right about that. But because it's sort of, you've heard the term the Red Scare, he's scaring everybody about the Reds, whether they're the pink Reds or the full Reds. Um, he's scaring everybody about that, about them. But because... His party is been in power. It looks to be one of, and if not directly in power, part of the coalitions in power, really more so. Um, oh, Hindenburg hates him, but he's supporting Hindenburg. Um, so, yeah. Um, <coughs> Sorry, this, this whole video is becoming a, a rambling thing. Um, probably shouldn't be doing all this, but we'll see what, what you think about this. If you get to here, tell me tell me if you think I should go on with this series or not. I don't know. Um, but so it's fractured. He, um, he wants to scare the population about the Reds. The Reds are very scary. The Reds were very scary in, in Munich. In Berlin, when they took over briefly in those places, right around 1920, um, I think Berlin was the Spartacus Revolt. Maybe that's Munich. Sorry if I'm getting that mixed up. Um, and they were really—I mean—they were mass executing people just for being opponents. And so the Reds are very scary, and so he's scaring everybody about the Reds. But the other sort of Reds, the the National Socialist, use that that 
and they they it's their salute you know it's um Hugenberg is identifying the problem the commies ultimately is what is what happens and it's the um national socialists that claim they have the answer to it now there are many reasons and let's uh, let's see we can uh, save and load open slot okay okay i guess that saved it let's continue back to here um it's the fractured policies and the um fractured personalities that allow the nazis to come to power so it is whether it's the voters which is part of it it's, it's both the voter i should say this a declarative statement it is both the voters and the leaders fractal uh, fractured um viewpoint their factionalism is what the nazis even though they are fractured fractured somewhat within within them um but not nearly as heavily well uh, hitler is able to maintain control because there's different revolts including a revolt up in berlin um, not just the stennis revolt but some other stuff that really sort of takes the sort of uh, berlin gauleiter to who's very left because the sort of berlin nazis were rather left very left they were sort of somewhere verging between um to, yeah between um socialist and communist left but highly nationalistic so they didn't buy into you know the the common turn the international elements of either socialism or communism but they were highly left and one of the leaders up there and he decides partially i think just because he sees him as ultimately as hitler is ultimately winning the struggle within within the party um and jumping onto hitler's bandwagon and helping to suppress them and that of course is joseph goebbels so and that's when he becomes a a hitlerite within the nazi party as opposed to a um romite or especially this time is just sort of waiting in the the shadows if you will um a minor power that grows very big himmler a himmlerite you know the the ss there's different frat factions within it but to the great majority of the outside they're one thing where between the center party the um the stallhelm the um you know uh you know the german national party the the, the bavarian party all of these things are all fractured on the other side and so and i guess the point is is for each election whether it's a city council or a president or a presidential election hitler does run in presidential election always loses to hindenburg but always loses that whenever you're um you're only having one nazi candidate for each of these offices and that is the key so they very well are fractured and ideologically as and as well as in power groups as regionally within the nazis but in each and every election that a voter goes into for a particular election there is only one nazi candidate you know again like it might you know for each city council or whatever or if it's a i don't know if they did any proportional elections if it's proportional it's proportional to the party and not for an individual candidate and so if you look at it that way um they are presenting a unified front for the voter all these other parties weren't and that is ultimately their doom 
um, to this day, uh, I haven't been following uh, too much of party politics. You have the um, CDU and CSU, the um, Christian Democrat Union and what the Christian Social Un Union. And again, that sort of is the the CSU is basically the same party, but in Bavaria. And they don't run any candidates outside of Bavaria, and the CDU doesn't run any candidates inside of Bavaria. It goes back to various things, but primarily that Bavaria is majority Catholic. The rest of Germany is majority Protestant, though you do have rather small little areas that are majority Catholic or a significant minority of Catholics in other areas. Yes, but so that so that way there it's a regionalism, and that can work. But the Bavarian People's Party, the Bavarian Folk Party, is not going to be um, winning these elections. Um, maybe it can in these games, but in, the, in this game, but it couldn't otherwise because it's a localized party. That, of course, is how the NSDAP was in 1924 when they tried that putsch to um, break away Bavaria from the rest of Germany. It's only after that and only after Hitler comes out of Landsberg prison that they really start looking at Germany as a whole. Okay, well, I want to hear your comments. Should I continue this video? Do you want me, do you want to see gameplay of this? Are you interested in that? Do you want me to try to play this and talk more about um, primarily 1932, but um, the politics of Weimar Germany. Do you want me to talk about the culture of Weimar Germany? It gets very spicy in some ways, way too spicy for, way too spicy for YouTube. So I, some of the stuff I'd have to gloss over. Um, but I don't know how much you want me to talk about that. Um, but it's a fascinating time period and has serious lessons for us today so with all that again subscribe like share comment all of that stuff i and i come i'm really serious is do you want to know more about this or not um but thanks very much see you next time for more historical gaming